There you go. Fuck, I'm useless. I'm trying to work out which place I should be looking. Uh, anyway, as you can see in my hands, uh, in one hand I've got the Canon G7X, the world's most popular vlogging camera for YouTubers. And in the other hand, I've got my new Galaxy S10 Plus phone. So both have cameras on them. The question is, which one am I filming this with right now? Have you guessed before I've said anything? You'll probably work it out if you're a clever bastard by the angle of the mirror. I'm not a clever bastard, I don't even know where to look. I am using this one here. The simple reason is that this one doesn't have a function pause button. So you cannot do record, pause, record. And if I'm wrong and someone's got one of these, and yes you can, then please let me know because I can't find it. Because I am a tech retard. Can we say retard on YouTube? Is that not PC? I don't know. If I've offended somebody, then uh, let me know about it. I'm sure you will. Um, really disappointed that this doesn't have that, but really happy after years of making stuff to find out that you can simply do a very fast vlog using your record or record function. There's no editing involved, and that's all the time of the day that it takes. So I'm going to carry on with the day and put this around. And this is how I've been making videos for a while, I'm just trying to find my gum boots because I don't want to walk outside my socks like I did yesterday morning for a early morning pee and then realised I didn't have any boots on. <laughs> and I stepped right into one of these little bastards' boots, didn't I? With my fucking socks on. Well, I don't know what the vlog's going to be today because I'm helping my mum this morning uh, with doing some work at her place. Uh, well, got to take a shitload of stuff for the trailer away the tip. And I'm also going to go and see a mate who's really having a hard time. That'll do, Bruno. That'll do, Bruno. That'll do. That'll do, mate. Oh, it's a good boy. There you go. Hey. Oh, yes, you are. Bruno, I had a terrible dream last night about you, mate. I dreamt someone yeah. shot you. Yeah, that's right. But they didn't, did they? You're alive. You had a horrible dream that one of the young fellows I'd take shot you because he thought you were, he thought you were an albino, an albino deer, and he shot you. That's what my dream. It's some fucking weird dreams sometimes. I worry about my brain sometimes the way it works. Why would I dream that? I love Bruno. I guess it comes down to our fears, eh? They often come in out in our dreams. Now, that's something that's going to be a reality because he's old and he's not going to be around for that much long. He's already got, like, for a big breed, he's gone a lot further in this life than I thought he would. G'day, guys! How are you going? Hey, Pace! G'day, Pace! G'day, Pace! You good boy? Now, you're not supposed to exacerbate the excitement in dogs, and I'm a bastard for doing that. I've got to stop doing that. You're supposed to keep them nice and relaxed, aren't you? Good boy, nice and calm. Because they're already well up, weighing up 100 miles out. Where you go? Oh, yep. Calm down, Pace. Calm down, Pace. Here you going, Poe? Good girl, eh? Hey? Who's your good dog, ain't Jay? She talks, listen to her. You good girl. Hey? Good girl? Come on. Duck, 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 duck. Where's Ducky this morning? Oh, there you go, down there. Right by my feet. Tell anybody else to fuck off, aren't you? Hey? Telling them all just fuck off, it's my food, okay. Don't get too close. I'll just give you a wee pile, ducky. There you go. Here's your little special pile there. And your chickens can go and get your own out there because Ducky will want her pile for herself. Because she's a greedy bitch. There she goes, just with her own little pile, eh? That good, eh? That good? Enjoying that, yeah? You're talking away to me now, is that good, eh? Yeah? Talking away. Eh? Yep, you get nice and fat, aren't you? Tails wagging. So we're gonna, what, you know, break your neck and put you in the pot? No, yes. Couldn't give a fuck. Must be grabbing a duck, eh? 
I don't know about you guys, but I reckon that duck talks to me. You say something to it and it's like... I've had so many of them, and uh, here's the final Muscovy duck. I've got a funny feeling she might die of old age here. That's one of my mates that run over. I've had about three run over so far from people coming up the driveway and just... The ducks don't move that fast, you know? They waddle and then they get squashed. But uh, I'm not going to keep breeding though, because they make shit everywhere. And there's enough shit around here as it is. Right, go down the pond and look at the ducks and drool on the pond. Good boy. Well, we were going there, but uh, you can see my landlord's walking her dog just down the driveway. Well, the dog's in front of her now. And that's why all my dogs are on high alert. They've seen her dog, Coco. They've all seen it. Pace was going to go charging off, and Bruno's doing his guard thing. Meanwhile, that's going on. B over here is trying to find a rabbit. Get some of these head down. His tail wagging. He's got his head in a rabbit burrow. His prey driver's through the roof. Now he's trying to dig the rabbit up. He's trying to dig it out of his burrow. What are you doing, B? What are you doing, B? Get out of that rabbit. B, come. No, B, come. Good boy. Good dog, B. B, come. Good boy. That's a good bit. No, be calm. Good boy. Stay here. I'm zoomed right out. Where I am is in the flight path of a lot of aircraft. So it's normally pretty noisy here. That mountain with a flat top there is where I used to do a lot of hunting. Haven't been up there for a couple of years now. As we go across to the left, we're heading down south. We're heading into the range it's the Mount Arthur there and some fantastic hunting there and lots of fresh snow up there right now I'd love to go up there and shoot a deer and further down south as we go below those mountains there's a lot of good hunting for pigs and deer as well yep amazing zoom on these uh, these phones eh I haven't yet learned to do the transitioning very well as you transition out I was just talking about planes flying over here and already there's one flying over and I can see some ducks flying over as well. We zoom in on those guys, probably won't get them. There we go. Oh, I've lost them. There we go. Lost them. Yeah, it's a cranking good phone for filming with. I love it. And Poe's looking down the highway. Someone's walking their dog down there as well. She's on high guard all the time, high alert. Oh, po, and there's a duck flying straight above me. What's going over there now? Gonna come out the other side, there he goes. Gee, they're fast. What you looking at, Po, hey? What's down there, eh, mate? I couldn't see anything. What were you looking at, eh? Hmm? Good girl. You're a good dog. Good girl. Yes, you are. Just as well I'm not wearing your good strides, eh? Put your paws all over me. Get all that morning shit out of your eyes, eh? I've been thinking about possibly breeding with Poe. Not that I need any more dogs, but I've got a lot of mates saying, man, she's an awesome dog. Are you going to breed with her? I'd love a pup. Eh? Poe's never had pups, have you, Poe? No. I'm sort of a bit reluctant because she's such a good dog and it takes a lot out of them. And I just really want to hunt more than breed. But I know she would throw good pups if I put the right dog over here. What do you guys reckon would be good over here? I've had a few different comments. Most people agree that likeness over likeness is what you want. So you want a dog with the same attributes, same prey drive, statue, size, all that stuff similar and you put that over a dog. So I've got a few mates who've got dogs like that. One of them is Richard Weir who I was fishing with this week. He's got a really nice dog and we talked about it. But it's a lot of work too and I like to free myself up for hunting and fishing and just doing general stuff. Oh, there's that dog at the front they're looking at now, right down here, the one that walks every day. Ah, I wonder what they see. I couldn't see it, but Poe could. Can you guys see it now? That's the one that the bloke walks every day, and it really makes me aware of what's going on. 
All my dogs can see them. Stay here, Poe. Look at Poe's body language. She's looking straight at it. Don't you touch Poe. You leave it. Yeah, good girl. So we can't go to the pond because my landlord's down there with her dog and we can't go at the front paddock. That leaves us one place left, Poe. Up here. Back orchard. Bee's just tracked off again on rabbit scent. Bee, come. Get in, Bee. Good boy. Get back in. Good dog. Stay. You might be wondering about all the apples on the tree. Or trees, at least. Well, the market sort of went so low that it actually cost more to take these guys off the trees. And uh, I was eating them till about oh, two weeks ago. Now they just don't taste good at all. They were nice tree ripened, but now they've... Well, you might get the occasional good one. But um, there's a lot of sugar in apple, and I've gone back on a keto diet, and I figured the good time to do it would be when the fruit started tasting bad on the trees. Naturally, we wouldn't be able to get fruit at that time. And I feel a lot better on a keto diet. Just seem to work better. Something's down there. Leave it. Don't touch. Come out of there. Po, come out. Po. Don't touch. B. Leave it. Leave a rabbit's B. There's something down there. Don't touch. Morning, Creamy. So this is Creamy. My sheep. I had two. I ate the other one. And I just kept this as backup for food if we had bad hunting. In the last couple of years, the hunting's been so good, the sheep's still here. So she's fat ass, and she's now so fat, I think she'd be dog tucker if I butchered her. I don't think she'd... Look at the size of her guts. Jeez. Yeah, handy for keeping the grass down around the farm, because I I can't be fucked with a lawnmower and doing lawns. None of that shit. Just put a sheep on a chain and sweet ass, bro. Dayla's really happy with her house truck and I'm really happy she's here, it's just awesome. It's the best thing could ever happen, it's a good place too, it's the sun in the morning and the sun in the evening. It's probably still edible, it's been hanging in my cooler which is semi frozen for about two months but I think it's done its dash. Well we know someone who'd like it don't we? He's already been fed this morning but you know that he'll uh, make short work of this. He'll chew all that sinew there and have a good chomp on it. His big teeth might even break down the bones. You know that boy, eh? That's a serious bone for Bruno, isn't it, eh? Eat up. I stuck this big old red squab in Poe's kennel and she's never been more happy. Look at her tail wagging. Comfortable. How many pig dogs get that sort of comfort, eh? Hmm? Only because I know you won't chew it up. Good girl. We might hunt you tomorrow. We're going duck shooting in the morning, but if we get a chance in the afternoon, we might run her for a hunt. See how we go. The best thing my daughter ever did was make me buy this coffee machine. I don't know how I live without one. I used to just drink instant coffee. Shit. So different. It was supposed to be a single, but I held on to it. Oh, well, it'll be like rocket fuel this morning. She works as a barista at a cafe in town, and she's taught me how to make coffee the right way, and I still stuff it up. It's still like pretty useless at it, but uh, that's her coffee cup from Austria, which I burgle quite regularly, as you can see. This morning we're going to have a black coffee, I think. Put that back in there. Champ. Nice black coffee. Who likes a black coffee? Oh. Mate. That's just what the doctor ordered. Hit the spot. So after I've had this, I'm going to go and see a mate who has been acting strange. He hasn't been answering his phone, 
this Texas, which is just not like him. I asked him if he wanted to come out for a hunt last weekend, and he made up some lame excuse. And to me, that signs that something's not well. He's, I know he's battled with depression before. So, uh, yeah, I need to go and check him out. And I had other plans for the day, but it's important to look after your mates, really important. So uh, I did a video a while ago, and I haven't got time to show you now. I'll show you when I get back about this issue of us men looking after men. It's really important. Women do it so much better than us. And I did a video about it, and I put it on Facebook, hoping it would go viral. And it started to go viral, because it was an important message about suicide and looking after each other. And it got up to 100,000 views, and then some fucking idiot complained because I was skinning a pig while I was talking, because it was just something that came to my head. And they complained about it being graphic. Piece of meat hanging up. You know, the world we lived in, we've been dumbed down. You know, you guys that are watching me are very... I don't want to sound egotistical or vain or anything, but you're very fortunate because a lot of people have been steered away from my channel because YouTube, see, they can't advertise a lot on it because of the hunting aspect of it. I've changed that by doing vlogs without showing hunting so much, but they really control you, what you watch, by what you search on Google. Facebook and Google are two big, massive corporations that make billions of dollars based on how much they can make you buy stuff. So old Clay Tool Stories doesn't buy much stuff, does he? I mean, he doesn't wear any designer clothes. He wears an old bloody woolen jersey. Um, he doesn't generate a lot of income for those people. Should do because people enjoy watching the content. You can tell by their like-hate ratio. Like, I use the word hate. Yeah. On that note, thanks for rating it. And those of you that give it a thumbs down, that's okay. I'm all right with that. But you could try and use your words and explain what it is you don't like so I could bring you something better. Because I ain't costing you anything what I'm doing. I'm giving it to you. Um, well, I'll get this coffee down and stop yakking. And I'll report back later on. I might show you that clip that I put up too if I can dig it out. Just on my way to the tip and I had to stop down here to look out to sea and clear my mind. After getting that trailer load, I caught up with my mate and we had a long talk. Very hard to not take on the pain of your people you love, you know, and they're hurt. And before I talk about it, I'm just going to take in this beautiful sea. Look at this. Oh, man. Really. That's where I go fishing out there. It's the middle of winter, and would you believe it? It just looks beautiful. We're right on the coast. You see the cars driving around the road there, but this is a magic place. Straight over there, where are we? There is Richmond, and Nelson's over here. Is Nelson Port over here. And you probably can't see it, but because all the fog on the water, Derville Island's over there. Anyway comes down to this yeah he's suffering bad depression what I would say is clinical depression and he said to me I don't know why this happens to me and I said to him what is it that really is upsetting you the most and he hit the nail right on the head he said I'm just not doing what I want to do I'm in the wrong place I'm trying to keep everybody happy and I can't keep myself happy people that try to keep other people happy often suffer bad health they often fall down if you try and please everybody else and don't please yourself you will suffer and I think and I don't know anything about depression I'm not a psychiatrist but my spin on it is this I think if you're not living your truth if you're not doing what really is you what you're meant to be doing who being your authentic self living your authentic self and being honest with yourself and being where you truly need to be for yourself for who you are eventually your body goes fuck this shit your mind goes fuck this shit your emotions go fuck this shit all of you goes fuck this shit and just stops and that's called depression you can't move you can't find joy you can't go forward with life you can't plan you can't look forward to anything so maybe depression isn't such a bad thing after all because talking with my mate this morning he had a breakdown he had an absolute breakdown and you know he's fucking hates his job and I said, that's it, you're getting out of your job. I'll help you out if you need some financial help in the meantime, but you're gonna do what you want to do. Now this particular guy, I'm not gonna name him for obvious reasons, but um, 
I think his talent has always been with working with people and not machinery. He got into an apprenticeship and became a mechanic and because his father wanted him to and stuck with it and ground away, never really enjoyed the work, never enjoyed the cold concrete in the morning and all the bloody, you know. But when he's with people, he really shines. He's got a real natural way with people. So when customers would come into the into the garage where he works, he was always great to them. And people always thought he was a wonderful, happy guy, but he, he, he wasn't, he was miserable. That's half of the problem. The other half is that some things happened to him when he was young, and he approached his, with his father, and he approached his father about it, and his father never validated those things that his father did wrong to him. And I think a lot of illness that people have, and a lot of problems come from not being validated when you're very young, and something just carrying it through your life. Anyway, we're moving ahead. I've got to see a doctor because I think he needs medication just for this time until he gets through it, but we're going to get to the root of the problem. So I'll be going and seeing him again next week. I'll give you a report on how he's getting on. Let's just call him Wayne for now because his name is it's not Wayne, but let's just call him Wayne so he's got a name and um, I'll let you know how we get on with it. Right, I'm just going to sit here a bit longer and I'll go home and I'll show you that video that I put up regarding this particular topic, if I can find it, that got flagged. Didn't get taken down, just got uh, covered up by Facebook. I could sit here all day. Back home. Nice to be home. I kind of like going down the tip though. Always end up meeting someone down there and talking shit. Got some stuff to open up that's coming in the mail. Plus I got a phone call from Wayne on the way back home. Saying that he gave his uh, notice to his boss. He was worried about it because he wasn't happy and uh, he was worried he was going to upset his boss and his boss actually said to him that he was happy that he was moving on because Wayne hadn't been performing very well at work and uh, so it's a win-win for everybody. So Wayne's already feeling a big pressure going off. Bruno's going to sit up here, aren't you boy? Good boy. Anyway, I'm going to sit this phone down and I'm going to open up these. Not the, that's my um, that's my old telephone. I'm giving it to someone. Right. Before I crank open what's in these uh, two envelopes, or parcel envelope at least, I want to show you this. This is one of my most treasured items. There's two things that my father has given me in my life, and one of them was this. He made this for me. It's made out of a deer antler handle from an animal he shot. The brass on that there and the tip there is off a ship steering wheel. I don't know if you can see that. Not very good light here. Uh, the blade's pretty pitted. It lights a bit better up here. Uh, it's not high carbon steel. It's not an amazing knife as far as knives go. It's just special to me because I've had it since I was 11. It's been lost a couple of times. I once walked 19 kilometres to go and get it. The place I left it in the bush and got it back. And one day, that's going to belong to my daughter. The other thing he made is he made the sheath for it. And the sheath actually has a picture on which you can't see anymore, which was a deer coming down the valley. You probably can't see any of it. It's pretty much, now it's disappeared off it. It's no longer there. So, that's one special thing that Dad gave me. Thanks, Dad. It meant a lot at the time, and it still means a lot. The other thing was the houseboat that he built. That was the flat bottom floozy, which was a, a great boat that he built. He built a lot of boats, my father, but a really cool one because he's converted from what was once a ferry in Marpur. He used to take people everywhere to a houseboat, which is a fantastic houseboat, and I love it. It needs a lot of work and money spent on it. I've already put two motors on, but... Just as I get enough money, I'm doing a little bit to it each time. The next thing it needs to do is come out of the water. Uh, it's got a leak and it needs to be fixed, but also needs to be painted. Right, I've got a couple of things to open. Uh, just picked these up on the way home from the rubbish tip. This is an envelope, and the reason I'm opening it is because I don't get letters hardly ever. I just get emails. I mean, letters are very rare, and, you know, why? it's just interesting to open a letter. Someone's actually taken the time to write. Well, I guess it, I'm only making the assumption. I don't really know what's in here, so... We'll find out. <laughs> It'd be funny if it was some hate mail. It's from from Kev Callahan, I think I'm saying that right. Or is it Gallaham? We'll open up, I'm not sure. Let's see what it says on the inside here. Definitely looks like a letter. A letter with something inside it. Hi Clay, just something to help you out with the hunting. Enjoy all your videos. If you're ever down south, call him for a cuppa. Cheers. Kev 
Callahan. He's got his phone number there. So it's a letter. Yep, and uh, something else here as well. Oh, looks like a photo of us. Uh, my oldest and some. Oh, wicked! And some. So I'll show you this first. There's a uh, picture of his oldest boy out hunting. Can you see that? I don't know how clear that is. Probably not very good in this light. Nice animal too. Good one. Fathers that take their sons hunting, fucking rock. Good man. And he's also sent me some vouchers, which is fantastic. There's bloody hell, mate. You need to do that. One, two, three, four, five gift vouchers. They'll go on fuel for the next trip with the young fellas. This weekend I'm duck shooting. I don't think I'll have a chance to go pig hunting, but I'll put those aside for that. So that will make someone else happy. Thank you very, very much. And I will write your name on the good bastards board tonight before I forget about it. Okay, this is from... Is there a name on here? Ollie. Ollie McKenzie from Renwick. There you go, Ollie. Now, Ollie sent us a while ago, and it was in the back of my truck for ages. And my daughter wanted to open I said, no, no. I uh, always open on, on video when I can, because it's interesting for the people who send stuff to see it get open. Don't know what's going to be in here, but uh, whatever it is, thank you very much, Ollie, for taking the time. Wicked. Wicked. I could have done with that uh, while I was in the sounds. Check that out. I haven't got my glasses, so I can't read what it's f fishing with, but uh, I'm guessing is it, I mean, pink is the colour too around here for snapper and that. That would be quite expensive. That would be quite a lot. Look at the work's gone into it. It's almost like it's handmade. That is a nice bit of kit, mate. I'm going to try that next time I go out fishing. I was actually in the sounds. I bet you can catch snapper on that. I have a good feeling about this, eh? I really do. I have a good feeling. I reckon that'll catch fish. Because everybody who I've taken out here who's had different rigs to me and similar gear like this has caught stuff. It's called a Cougar Pink. Cougar K-O-H G-A. Thank you very much. And it looks like it's made in Japan. And if it is, that's where the best shit comes from for fishing. That's awesome, bud. And I'll probably talk to my mate Troy Dando about how to fish that, because Troy, he's on the up on everything with fishing. And what else have we got here? There's a letter as well, before we look at that. Make sure there's nothing else in there, because I have been known to throw stuff away that hasn't uh, been... I'm going to need my glasses, I think, because it looks like a letter. Oh, he's, he's gone and done the big font. Good man. G'day Clay. Ollie here. I'm 11. He's 11. And I live in Blenheim. And would love to go pig hunting with you. You've got it mate. I made the putty gators in the package for a school project. Those are gators and he made them himself. How fucking cool is that? I love it when sh people make shit themselves. Um, and hopefully you can find someone that will be able to use them. I know someone, probably me. Uh, the fishing jig is called a slider and works amazing and does not use any baits as well and works better than bait. you meant to wind it up for about four meters and then drop it again. And I don't really use the pocket knife, so do with it what you like. There's a pocket knife in there too? Cheers. Um, I can only go hunt, hunting after school holidays. My mum's phone number is, and he's put his mum's phone number. I will ring your mum and I will have a talk to her and we will get you hunting, my man. We will get you hunting. Um, we'll sort something out. You're a long way from here, but I do go over to Blenheim with the boys and I will see if we can include you in one of our hunts, so stand by. So there might be a pocket knife. He made these gators himself. I didn't see the knife in there, but uh, maybe it's inside here. Yep, I can feel it in there. What a clever fellow, eh? So he's, he's included this knife, which is a really awesome gift, mate. You didn't need to. Now, I've actually got one. So I think what I'm going to do, if it's okay with you, Ollie, is I'm going to pass it on to a young fellow I know who's got absolutely nothing. You know, I've been taking him out for a while now. I haven't filmed him because he's, um, let's say, comes from a bit of a tough background and there's a bit of legal reasons why I can't film him. But I've been taking him out and he's got nothing and I think I'm going to, if I don't give it to him, I've got another uh, guy I'll, I'll show you. I'll, I'll think about that. But um, 
Yeah, I do have a pocket knife, so, but thank you very much. It's an awesome thought. But what I'm really impressed with is these, mate. You made these, this is a great thing. Look, he's got, he's got Velcro on them. And parties are always handy, particularly if you're hunting over in Blenheim. <laughs> so, what a great gift. Okay, thank you very much, Ollie. And thank you, Kev. I am going to go back inside, and I said I'd show you that video that I made about um, how men should network and work together. And we'll just finish that video on that today. Absolutely stoked. See, the world is full of good bastards. Well, I don't know how successful it is to show a video on computer, but I couldn't uh, find the file, and plus this is a snap vlog. This was the good bastard challenge I did, and I'll just pan over here and turn it on. This got over 400,000 views in just the first week, which gave me a good idea. I'll run it and then you can uh, watch the other one. There you go. This is the Good Bastard Challenge. You, mate, are a good bastard. Actually, that's an understatement. You're a fucking good bastard. You read, Lord, the good bastard meter. You are seen fucking sational. The world is full of some shitty people and some arsehole people. You're okay, honey. But you, mate, you're not that shit. You're just top shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Good bastard. So keep on doing what you're doing and being who you are. Because I love you, man. Come on, sweetheart. You're not dead yet. You're okay. Pass this on. This is a uh, good bastard challenge. If you know someone else, he really is genuinely a good bastard. Right. Uh, that was a good bastard challenge, which gave me a really good idea for the idea of suicide prevention for men. So I'll find that video as soon as I work out where it is on this and show you that one. Righty yo, we're on the Clay Tall Stories Facebook page, which has got quite a few videos. That's uh, my my version of the 12 days of Christmas. I'm gonna pan down, try and find that's the good bastard challenge there. I want to try and find that one help mate out. Probably won't find it. But, uh, just panning through, pan through, show more. Don't mind if I do, mate. What else we got? There's a lot of short videos that I put on my Instagram and also put on my Facebook. This may show violent or graphic content. I know my, my face is pretty scary, but honestly. There you go. I'm just knocking the skin off this toothy ball that I got yesterday here, and I got to thinking about something that happened a few years ago. I ran over the tail of one of my dogs, and all the other dogs jumped on top of it. They packed on it and tried to kill it. Why would they do that? It's because dogs come from wolves, and wolves always will take out the weakest link in the pack to maintain the strength of the pack. Now ask human beings, we've evolved past that stage. We have hospitals and care centres and we have compassion and empathy, hopefully, for our fellow man. But some men still think like wolves. They think that if they cry out and ask for help, they'll get packed on by everybody. And you won't, because you've got good bastards all around you. Look around you. Trouble is, we have a really high rate of suicide here in our country, New Zealand, and many other countries, for the simple reason that you men are not crying out. So if you're in trouble, Someone runs over your tail or anything, cry out for help. You're not a wolf, you're a man. Be good, can't be good, be careful. See you later. Righty, eh? That was it. And again, I reiterate what I said. It just pisses me off that the way we're controlled over things, you've got all this like rap music, and the, I like rap music, there's nothing wrong with rap music, but a lot of the messages those artists are putting across is like they're putting women down low, they're promoting drug use. And they're getting billions of views, or millions, yeah, billions, billions, that's exaggeration, millions. There are some artists that are getting billions. So that's getting really promoted. There's a whole lot of war games of men shooting men that get promoted. And yet you try and put a message out like that, and it gets cut off because there's a fucking pig hanging up, a bit of pork. You know, what sort of a world are we living in? Anyway, that was me today, this vlog. Hope you're enjoying these snap vlogs. Tomorrow morning I'm going duck shooting. Sunday's video is the fattest, biggest sow I ever caught in the forestry. That's only on Patreon. It costs you stuff all to watch it. Jump on board and join us there for that hunt. Otherwise, there probably won't be a chance to do a vlog for Sunday because that is my work Sunday's video. I think that's all I was going to say. These step vlogs are all take one. There's not a chance to correct if I say something wrong. So I may stuff up on them, but that's just the nature of them. Be good. Can't be good. Be careful. See you later.